Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on our news. The Prime Minister flies into Bimini for the groundbreaking of a multi-million dollar development that's expected to create hundreds of jobs. We've got that story straight ahead. Bahamar begins recruitment exercises just 95 days before its phased opening. Ethric Bo explains why he no longer wants to run for the DNA. That story straight ahead. Leader of the Democratic National Alliance addresses issues of candidate infighting in the party. That story is coming up straight ahead. The Soul Sisters come together for a big race in paradise. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina McNeil. Topping news tonight, Prime Minister Perry Christie and several other members of his cabinet flew into Bimini today to break ground on a new multi-million dollar development on Ocean Key, a future world-class cruise destination that will create hundreds of jobs. Dana Smith reports. Investors say they will transform this industrial wasteland into a paradise, a cruise destination development that's expected to employ hundreds. This project will put the Bahamas right in the front of the whole world. Yes. MSC Cruises Executive Chairman Pierre Francesco Vago broke ground on the country's newest development alongside Prime Minister Perry Christie this afternoon. The barren area, soon to be named Ocean Key, is currently home to aragonite miners, but will be completely transformed into a premier cruise destination, which will include a marina, a hotel, a Bahamian village, restaurants and bars, beach bungalows, a lighthouse, retail spaces, an amphitheater, straw market, stingray and dolphin experience, and more. And Vago promised the massive development will create hundreds of jobs. As a result of the $200 million investment that we have made, we will engage more than 1,000 locals, Mr. Prime Minister, <laughs> to work on the massive development of the Sandy Cay, to go through as we transform it into Ocean K. Once the work is finalized, we will employ over and above 120 locals in a regular basis to run the operations. So they'll be based here on the island. Never with certainty estimate when I heard, when I heard you say, over this period of time, Vago, a thousand Bahamians over in construction. I turn to the deputy and say, boy, and they say we ain't doing nothing. <laughs> MSC has also agreed to build housing for employees, power generation equipment, a water and ice production plant, a water treatment plant, emergency medical stations, and facilities for customs and immigration officers and police officers. And construction on the key is set to begin immediately. This brings into being a new model for cruise ship destinations in the Bahamas. What they have agreed to do, no cruise line, no matter how much it is connected to our country, has ever agreed to do. And so here, as I speak to it, we're establishing a new, an innovation that we hope not to depart from. In addition to the development, MSC, the world's largest privately owned cruise company, has also committed to establishing a seafarer's technical school on Grand Bahama, where locals will be trained to become future employees at MSC. It is projected that by the first half of this month, some 100 young Bahamians will be hired on board MSC's cruise ships. Reporting for Our News, I'm Dana Smith. With Bahamar's opening date just 95 days away, the multi-billion dollar resort today relaunched its recruitment efforts, the first phase of hiring since the resort was purchased by Chow Tai Fook Enterprises last year. Bahamar President Graham Davis tells our news that these are exciting times for the resort. We're 95 days away from opening uh, for April 21st and uh, today really marks the start of that recruitment campaign. We are. Uh, gearing up very quickly to make sure that we have over 1,500 uh, associates, uh, again from, uh, from the Bahamas, 
uh, to be able to uh, hire from the very entry-level position all the way up into the senior management positions here at the hotel. Davis says all hiring is being done online through the portal at careers.bahamar.com. Hiring will begin for the Bahamar Convention Center, the golf course, the shops and restaurants at the resort, as well as the casino and casino tower. Uh, we're really looking for people that have uh, fantastic uh, personalities, great attitude, and, and we're training the skills, we're training, we have our academy back up as far as uh, training for uh, dealers, uh, for croupiers, uh, casino is a very big part of the, uh, of the opening. Uh, we're going to be uh, uh, ongoing training in those aspects as well. With those that have worked here before, uh, we certainly look forward to having uh, you all reapply and, and uh, with those skills and those great personalities that we had in the past, uh, we look forward to welcoming you back. Davis says training will be essential to build a world-class team of associates to open the resort under the guidance of the hotel operator, which will be brought in next week. For those that have no experience, it's, uh, it's a, a, a multi-week training program. Uh, particularly with the uh, with the croupiers, with those that work in the casino and the, and the dealers, uh, we're going to bring in uh, those those fantastic trainers that we had in the past, and uh, and open up that uh, training school uh, for uh, for the casino uh, dealers and, and croupiers that want to join in uh, with that team. This, as the resort continues the ongoing hiring of executives, a number of who will come from the Hyatt brand. When it comes to uh, the the management levels, division heads. Uh, all the way down, of course, uh, bringing in um, uh, here from an island, uh, across the family islands and, and abroad. Uh, we welcome everyone to, uh, to apply that have that experience necessary for those roles. Uh, but uh, certainly at the top uh, senior executive level, uh, we are bringing from the brands to bring that experience and, uh, and that training. Davis says Bahamar will create more than 5,000 jobs before the resort's full opening during the 2017-2018 high season. Anyone interested in jobs at Bahamar is encouraged to apply at careers.bahamar.com or send a resume to careers at bahamar.com. Well, days after withdrawing as the Democratic National Alliance candidate for Southern Shores, businessman Etheric Bo says he is now wary of the party. His comments come after a feud between Bo and talk show host Lincoln Bain became public. Jasmine Brown explains in this report. Jasmine? That's right, Christina. Bo made a number of claims against Bain over the weekend, and the issues spilled over onto social media. However, today, Bo says his stance on the matter remains. The former DNA Southern Shores candidate has suggested his issue with Bain, who secured the DNA's nomination for Pinewood last week, stems from business dealings. Bo says he was unaware that Bain was going to be a DNA candidate and says he would have appreciated having the chance to speak to the DNA leaders before Bain was nominated. It is really saying that you are desperate and the DNA was on a good wicket. The the response we were getting out there in the community was superior. Bain's DNA nomination came after he was unsuccessful in securing a free national movement candidacy. The FNM nominated Reuben Ramming for Pinewood instead. When asked if he feels the DNA's brand has been damaged by his feud with Bain, Bo said yes. These issues are hurting the DNA, but see, we keep going on about DNA, FNM, PLP. These are artificial constructs. We need to focus on Bahamian, what is good for the Bahamas. The selection of uh, people with uh, iffy characters, that's not good for the Bahamas. He added that while he still believes in the foundation of the party, he is now wary as he feels like an outcast. I was a wonderful member of the DNA uh, before I went home. And all of a sudden, I'm the worst thing. I, I'm worse than fungus on bread now. And so, you know, I really have to evaluate my situation with the DNA because it's untenable. And while some have been critical of his decision to publicize his issues with Bain, Bo says he saw no other way to address the issue. I, I had to resign. You see, I had committed to this campaign against Lincoln prior. If I had known this sooner, I would have said there's a problem. And maybe I could have left uh, quietly if Lincoln was so important to the DNA agenda. I could have just left quietly and nobody would, would even know. Or, but I still would be committed with my group to show up and campaign against him. But I'm, a, I'm a already a candidate. It would not look proper for a DNA candidate 
in one constituency to be actively campaigning against a DNA candidate in another constituency. Now, Bo says the issue will not die today as he plans on continuing his campaign. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Jasmine. Well, the story doesn't end there, as Bain is also weighing in on the issue. The DNA's Pinewood candidate says he has met with his lawyers and plans to take legal action against Bo for comments made on social media. He will now have to substantiate his claims in a court of law because we will sue, of course. Bain says he's saddened that Bo has opted to put his personal issues over what's best for the Bahamas. Bain adds that if Bo truly felt he had a legal leg to stand on, he would have taken him to court by now. Patrick Bo believed that he had a claim. He should have taken out a claim a long time ago. Um, and, and any right-thinking person would understand that. I mean, come on. If you believe you have a claim against someone and you did nothing um, since you claimed from 2010 to now, um, any right-thinking person would know that that is complete nonsense. Bain adds that he believes his issues with the businessmen stem from their involvement in a group called the Justice League, in which Pinewood homeowners were fighting to save their homes from demolition. A lot of people that know Ethic know the way he is. Um, this stemmed from a matter again from 2010 when I was fighting for the people of Pinewood Gardens. Okay? Um, their homes were being demolished, and uh, I was in a group called the Justice League with Ethic Bo. Now, Bain says he will not be distracted by the drama as he is focused on solving the issues of Pinewood. Still to come on our news, the Democratic National Alliance leader weighs in on candidate issues. Why one political party leader says Bahamar won't help unemployment and a group of women race in paradise. That's coming up.